morning, Rain Fire. This is Pastor Joanne, and I'm so excited to be here with you again on this Sunday. Come on, say it's Sunday, it's Sunday, it's Sunday. We are grateful for every day that God gives us to be together, to get the word of God, whether we're in a building worshiping together or at a little bit of a distance, it doesn't matter because the anointing, the spirit and the presence of God has the power to keep us connected, to keep us alive, to keep us full of vigor, power and strength. So I wanna welcome you to our Sunday morning time of worship, time of prayer. And you may say, well, worship, Pastor Joanne, what do you mean? We don't have music right now. We don't have uh, praise. Whoever said that worship means there has to be music? Who said that worship means there has to be singing? Worship is an attitude of the heart. And so, yes, we come together to worship God. Come on. I just dare you right now in the chat to just begin to worship. What is that? To exalt God, to declare who he is, to declare his goodness. Come on. I dare you to just go ahead and allow your fingers to type in worship, to put it in the atmosphere. Our God is an awesome God. He's amazing. He's wonderful. He's full of favor. There's no one greater than him. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name today. You are high and lifted up above every situation and every circumstance. Father, we love you. We adore you. We bless you and we worship you with our lives. We worship you with our heart. We worship you and we exalt you and we declare that your name is above every other name. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? I know that you do. I know that you do because you have that fire way deep down on the inside of you that continues to just just churn and burn and you know like that song that says set a fire down in my soul that i can't contain and i can't control i want more of you i want more of you that's what is on the inside of us it's a fire that we can't control it's the desire it's a burning it's a passion it's wanting more of god it's wanting more of his spirit wanting more of his presence and that is just who we are it is who god created us to be and i'm excited I'm excited today for this beautiful day. I'm excited that God is moving in our lives. I'm excited that even in the midst of everything that is going on around the world, I believe that the true church of Jesus Christ is rising up. I believe that true men and women of God are rising up. I believe that prayer is bursting forth from those that are really connected to the spirit of God. I believe that holiness is something that each and every one of us is longing for and desiring and living in. I believe that all of us are just going after God like we've never gone after him before. I know that I keep saying that, but I do believe that it is the heart and the desire of God for us to be able to continue to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Why? Because it all begins with a desire. It all begins with your heart, okay? And so I'm excited to be here. If you would just take a moment to greet your brothers and sisters in the chat. I know that you miss them. I miss each and every one of you. I, I don't think um, that there's ever been a season and a time in my life where I was not able to go to a church building and be around my family because to me, my church church family is my family. I grew up in Chicago and I did not grow up around aunts and uncles and cousins. I didn't have that luxury. So my church family was my cousins and my family and my aunties and my uncle. My church family was my family. And so you guys are that to us. Rainfire is our family. So we definitely, we miss each and every one of you, we miss those hugs. And so take a moment to just greet each other and bless each other. If there's a name that you see that you recognize, just kind of just give them a hey, give them a virtual hug uh, in the chat and let people know that you love them that you're thinking about them, uh, that we are a family. And, and as Pastor Corey said to me uh, this week, he said, excuse me, my nose is itching just a little bit. Uh, Pastor Corey said to me today, he said, uh, Pastor Joanne, make sure that you remind the church that this is going to be the best week yet. That's what Pastor Corey said. He said, remind Rainfire that this is going to be the best week yet. And so I believe that we should be in agreement with what he is declaring, with what he is speaking. So let's speak that over ourselves. Let's speak that over our families. Let's speak that over uh, this week. This is the best week 
week yet. We're going to see miracles this week. We're going to see provision this week. We're going to hear the voice of God this week. Uh, we're going to be creative this week. We're going to have peace this week. We're going to walk in purpose this week. We're going to be used by God this week. This is going to be the best week yet. So we declare it. We believe it. We come in agreement with Pastor Corey's uh, declaration and confession uh, because in agreement, there is power. In agreement, there is breakthrough. In agreement, there is uh, just next levels. And so that's what we're declaring here in the Conjury household. And we want the Rainfire Church family to come in agreement with the words that Pastor Corey has spoken by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that this is going to be the best week yet. And I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And so take a moment right now to just share um, share this uh, stream so that others can uh, can uh, be connected and be uh, blessed by the word of God. I love, I just love, love, love receiving testimonies, receiving the uh, just the words of excitement um, from family members that reach back out to you that say, hey, thank you so much for sharing that word with me. It was such a blessing because at the end of the day, you know what? It is not me, but it is the spirit of God uh, that lives in me and that gives me this grace to do uh, what I need to do. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, my phone is going off and this is Pastor Corey. Hey, honey. Hey. Guess what? I am streaming right now to Rainfire Church for our 11 a.m. service. You want to say hello? <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? Yes, I am. Come on. Say hi to everybody. What is going on? <laughs> yes, yeah, so hilarious. Well, let me, let me just say this to everyone. Um, glad to know that you're doing well. Um, and... I'm excited to see people taking everything that's happening seriously, you know, serious. And um, that's that. So I, I don't know what you're preaching about right now, so I don't want to be too light or too deep. So I'll just tell everybody I love them, and I can't wait to see them soon. <laughs> yes. Well, I was actually just telling them literally right before you called that you were declaring and speaking and saying that this is going to be the best week yet. So we were coming in agreement with the declaration that you released um, into the spiritual realm regarding this week. And so we're in agreement with you that this is going to be an amazing week. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, honey, I ain't going to interrupt. I, you know I love you. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> okay. We love you too. All right. Bye. -bye. All right, bye. Talk about perfect timing, right? He's going to call me right when we're talking about him. Uh, just such, he's such a blessing and he is so strong and has so much vision and I'm just so grateful for him. He's, he's amazing. He's amazing. But um, do me a favor and share this. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please uh, make the time to just hit that subscribe button, um, hit the little notification bell and... Um, Let's get started, okay? Father, we adore you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you and we honor you today. You are so very good and we just glorify your name. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. You are so good and we honor you and we worship you right now. Father God, um, in every home that is watching right now, I declare that people everywhere are just lifting their hands and they're welcoming your spirit into their home. They're welcoming the Holy Spirit into their family. They're welcoming the Holy Spirit into their children. And we just love you, Lord Jesus. And we ask that you would transform us in the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, Father God, because you are among us. We thank you, Father God, that even in this time, you are working in us. And we thank you for your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So last week we were talking about, do you know your limits? Okay. Do you know your limits? And it's amazing because I always, um, I want to say that I approach what I do with fear and trembling. Um, sorry, don't be distracted by my hair, but it's, it's getting on my nerves. Um, I am always, I always have an element of, uh, 
reverence for the opportunity to to speak um and i and i was really just saying as i always say i always say you know like god what do you want to say what do you want to say to your children what do you want to say to rainfire what do you have to say and so last week we were talking about do you know your limits and the fact that we were made in the image of god and the and the truth of the matter is is that you have no limits you are limitless but the only limit that you should have is what did god say okay what did god speak what did god say what has he spoken and that is what um becomes uh like um, guardrails to our lives and to our decisions because we can do anything under the sun. We, if we set our mind to it, we can do it. But what does God say? If God is saying no, then then it's a no. But if God says yes, then you go for it and you and you watch God do miracles through you and through your obedience, right? And so, what He put in my heart this week is, what are you thinking? Okay. What are you thinking? Because God dealt with me last week. I think I shared this with you guys on the prayer call. Um, and even maybe maybe it was um, Saturday morning. And I was praying and I was saying, God, I, I just asked that you would renew my mind. Just renew my mind. And he said, Joanne, I cannot re renew your mind. You must renew your own mind. Okay, you have to renew your mind. You have to deal with your thought life. You have to renew your mind. I cannot renew your mind for you. I can't do it. You have to renew your mind. And so even right now, I'm, I'm about... Um, you know, 30 something days away from my birthday. My birthday's in June. And even at the stage of life where I am right now, I have to recognize that there are areas of my life regarding what I think and what I meditate on and what I allow to, um, to live and move in the area of my thinking. I have to confront, I have to break, I have to cut. I have to be able to have a new way of thinking in many areas, okay? They always say you can't teach uh, an old dog new tricks. Uh, but a person that says, I am willing to change, I'm willing to learn something new, I'm willing to, to renew my mind, those are the people that excel. Those are the people that uh, are able to grab onto new opportunities. Those are the people that are able to recognize an open door and walk through it because a person that is set in their ways cannot see the new, cannot embrace the thing that God is showing them. A person that is stuck in their, that's what happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were so stuck in their old way of doing things that when the living word showed up on the scene, which was Jesus Christ. They were not even able to understand who he was. They were not able to receive him. They were not able to honor him. They were not able, all they could do was stay, stay, remain stuck in their old ways. And because they remained stuck in their old ways, they could not embrace the new thing that God was doing in Jesus Christ. So because they did not, so he had to go get fishermen and he had to go get tax collectors and he had to go get all of these men that were unqualified because they were the ones that had an open mind to be able to receive the new thing that God was doing. I pray and I declare in the name of Jesus that we are not going to get stuck in a religious mentality regardless of what, how we were raised or, or whatever the case may be that we're going to be able to recognize the new thing that God is doing in us and around us. And we're going to be able to adapt. We're going to be able to move with what God is doing now. Somebody say now. We're going to be able to adapt and move with what God is doing right now. Because if we stay in our old ways of thinking, we're going to miss open doors. We're going to miss opportunities. We're going to miss new things that God wants to do in our lives. And 99.9% .9 of all of that begins with our thinking process. Okay. So God was dealing with me. He said, Joanne, I cannot change. I cannot renew your mind. You must renew your mind. This is something that you must do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What are you thinking? Holy Spirit, anoint this word I ask by the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus. I ask that you would reach through this uh, medium of communication and touch every heart, including mine, Father God, that we would be under, able to understand what you are communicating to us and help me to uh, communicate effectively. Holy Spirit, I rely completely and totally on you. I have nothing in and of myself to give anyone, but I surrender to you right now. Precious Holy Spirit, you are my master. Jesus, you are my Lord, and I submit myself to you and this word to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I just shared with you, God dealt with me last week and he said um, that he can't renew my mind, but I have to renew my mind. I must do it. Somebody say, I must do it. Go ahead and put it in the chat. I have to do it. Can't 
nobody do it for you. No one can, that was some nice grammar, right? Can't nobody do it for you. No one can do it for you. I have to renew my mind and my way of thinking. You have to renew your mind and your way of thinking, okay? So number one, that's the number one thing I'm gonna share with you. You have to renew your mind. I cannot do it for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. Pastor Corey can't do it for you. Bishop so-and-so can't do it for you. Your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, your husband, your spouse, your kids. No one can renew your mind. You have to renew your own mind, okay? So I need that to be number one. If you have a notebook, if you're writing things down, number one, I must renew my mind, okay? That means that the responsibility is on me for my life and the responsibility is on you for your life. You have to renew your mind, okay? Number two, uh, renewing of the mind, okay? Renewing of the mind is an intentional project that is ongoing. Somebody say ongoing. Oh my Lord. You know, sometimes I just, I just get tired. <laughs> I know that's not a positive confession, but sometimes the thought of having to persevere in everything, just the thought of it just makes me tired. It's just like, okay, God, can I just get a pass on something? I mean, in the human side of it, the human part and the human side of who we are. Sometimes it's just like, God, I don't want to have to keep doing this. I don't want to have to keep persevering. Can I just get a pass? Can I just get a time out? Can I just get a break? But the truth of the matter is, is that even in everything, in everything, in your health, in, in your, um, you know, in your prayer life, in your finances, everything is an ongoing process. Okay. Everything is an ongoing process. So even with this, when we are looking at the fact of renewing our mind, it has to be intentional and it is ongoing, intentional and ongoing. Go with me to Romans 12. Okay. Romans 12 verse one, oh, renewing your mind is intentional. It's, it's a project. You are your own project, okay? Stop trying to make everybody else your project. You are your own project, and renewing your mind is a project that is ongoing, and you have to be intentional about renewing your mind, okay? What are you thinking? That's what we're talking about today. What are you thinking? So it's an intentional project that is ongoing. Romans 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you. What is it to beseech you? I beg you. I, 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 I Listen to what I'm saying. Understand what I'm saying. There's an urgency to what is being said. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God. Present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So present your bodies, present the members of your body, present your mind, present your thoughts, present your attitude, present everything about you, present your body as a living sacrifice. That means you are bringing yourself before God and you are saying, God, here I am. Cut me up. Cut me into little pieces. Here I am. I'm a sacrificial lamb. I offer myself to be sacrificed in your presence, okay? Offer yourself. Don't, don't make God have to chase you down. Offer yourself. Here I am, God. Keep coming back to the Lord, okay? Offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, okay? Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. And so um, I got my girls yesterday some, um, what is it called? A kinetic sand. Okay, kinetic sand. So it's it's kind of like this moldable sand that is not, it's not as it's not as horrible as slime. Okay, I, I know that some moms out there, they just hate slime. I hate slime because it gets in everything and then you can't get it out. But this kinetic sand, um, it's it's almost like, you know, it's really easy to clean up. But what it is is that the sand is moldable. So you can take the sand, and the girls were in the kitchen and they were having a competition, and so one of them was made um made a cake out of pink sand with, you know, with green, a uh, little, you know, little decoration on it. And, and she put a candle in it. And, and then the other one was making, I don't know, make cookies or, you know, of course, Hadar, she, she was making cookies because that's, that's her business, milk and cookies. So she, out of the sand, she was making cookies, right? And so this kinetic sand is moldable. It's moldable. So any which way that you push it, it's going to mold. So if you want the sand to look like an egg, it's going to look like an egg. If you want the sand to look like a heart, it's going to look like a heart. If you take that sand and you mold it, 
um, any which way it's gonna mold into that shape. So if you put it in a mold and you take it out of the mold, the sand is gonna look like a replica of whatever mold you put it in. So if you put it in a cookie mold or if you put it in a in an ice cream scooper mold, whatever mold you put this sand in, it is gonna conform to the shape of the mold that it is put in. That is not what you're supposed to be doing, okay? What do you mean, Pastor Joanne? That means that the word of God is saying to you, do not be molded to this world. Don't let your mind and your thoughts and your attitude be molded to the spirit of this world. Don't allow your thought life and the ideas that permeate your life to be molded to what is happening in culture, to be molded into what is going on in society. Okay, it should be to where our thoughts and our opinions and, and the way we think and the way we live is so set in stone that when the world tries to put a mold, when they try to put a mold on us and try to force us into that mold, we break that mold because we're so set in stone in our convictions, in the way that we see God, in the way that God is on the inside of us. So we are not we're not being transformed to their image, but their image or their mold breaks when it tries to force us to conform, okay? Um, when you look at slavery, when you look at any time where, where men have oppressed other men, there was an oppression, there was, there was a breaking of the spirit, there was a breaking of the will, there was, a, there was torment, there was beating, there was fear, there was intimidation. Why? Because the person that was the oppressor wanted to, to force the, the slave or wanted to force the person um, to conform to what they wanted. So we want you to be slaves. So, so even after slavery was over, there was such a, per, a permeated mentality of slavery that people that were free were still living and acting like they were slaves because they didn't know how to renew their mind. They didn't know any other way to think. Their mind was completely formed into the mold of slavery. They had to renew their mind to get a new mindset of a free man or a free woman. God is saying to us, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be molded to this world, but be transformed, be changed. Why? How? Be changed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he's saying, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Why? Why do you need to be transformed? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if your mind is molded to the ways of the world, if your mind is molded to the thoughts of the enemy, if your mind is molded to negativity, if your mind is molded to losing, if your mind is molding uh, to molded to sin, if your mind is molded to the things that are not of God, then your body will follow, your actions will follow, your attitude will follow. But when you say no more, I'm going to renew my mind and you begin to renew your mind concerning how God feels about you. You begin to renew your mind about how you feel about yourself. You begin to renew your mind about um, holiness. You begin to renew your mind about the power and the authority that you are given on this earth. Now you are being transformed because you have renewed your mind. Okay. So number one, you must renew your mind. Number two, renewing of the mind is an intentional project that is ongoing. And number three, number three, enemy provoked thoughts come to sow seeds that will eventually grow and crack the foundation of who you are. Okay. Number three, enemy provoked thoughts come to sow seeds that will eventually grow and crack the foundation of who you are. You must pull these thoughts intentionally and replace them. Okay. So in the process, as I'm asking the question, what are you thinking? You have to be able to recognize, okay. You have to be able. So for example, I had a situation yesterday and it was a very, very frustrating situation. It's, it's a situation that it just really, really bothered me. And on, on the tail end of that situation, it's like my mind just began to be filled with all of these different thoughts and none of them were positive, okay? None of them were positive. But then it was just like, hold on, wait a minute. Because I started to feel myself, I started to feel myself feeling feeling down. I started to feel myself like getting overwhelmed and getting aggravated and, and just feeling, you know, just feeling down. And it was just like, hold on, mm -mm. 
I had to intentionally stop that process. Okay. I had to intentionally stop that process and I had to begin to replace those thoughts. I had to begin to replace those thoughts. Okay. So, um, I went and I bought, um, some, some flowers for some of the pots that are in front of our home, right? And so I had to transplant out of the pot, you know, out of the plastic pot that the plants came in, I had to take the plants out of that pot that they were placed in and transplant it into the pot in front of the house. I had to get fresh dirt and I had to transplant and I had to, you know, repot the plant, okay? But when I took, when I took out the plastic, um, you know, the plastic encasing that the, that the plant came in, it was so hard to get it off. And I was just like, goodness, so I'm, you know, pulling, cause it was probably about this, you know, this big around. So it was a pretty big, it was a pretty big plant. And when I pulled off the, the bottom plastic container, I mean, it was like the roots, the roots of that, of that, of those flowers, they were so thick and they were so intertwined that literally the roots of the flower had filled the entire bottom of that, um, you know, of that, uh, that, that plastic container to where it was, it was almost like it didn't want to let go of the container. How many of you know that you can have the foundation of a house? Okay. A strong foundation of a house, but if there is a tree that is planted too close to that house, the roots of that tree can little by little begin to just intertwine and go into the ground and it can begin to put pressure in different areas of that foundation until it finds a crack. It can begin to just kind of crack the foundation of that house because roots go deep and roots are strong. Okay. This is the same way it is with your thoughts with the things that you meditate on, with the things that you allow to remain in your mind, the things that you think about over and over and over again. And if you don't deal with those negative thoughts, okay, I'm talking about what are you thinking? If you don't deal with those negative thoughts, those negative thoughts, the roots go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And that, and those roots, if you don't stop while, when that, when that thought first comes, like you have to be intentional to grab that, grab that weed of negativity and pull it out and replace it. The devil is a liar and you got to replace that thought. Okay. Some of you may be, may be struggling with sinful thoughts, with thoughts of fornication, with thoughts of, you know, inappropriate things. Maybe you're a person that's married and you struggle with thoughts about, you know, other people, which are not your spouse. You have to intentionally head on deal with the, well, I'm not doing anything. What you don't realize is, is your thinking will become your actions. If you think about something long enough, if you meditate on something long enough, if you think about something long enough, your thought life will become your life of action. Okay. Your thought life will become your life of action. Okay. So if every day, if every day you get up with the thought, Today is a good day. If every day you get up with the thought, I am more than an overcomer today. Today, I'm going to see the victory of God. Today, I'm going to walk in the favor of God. Today, I'm going to be connected to God like never before. Today, because I'm in the will of God, I win. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am connected to God and this is why I cannot fail. When that is what you think about, when that is what you meditate, when that is what you, you know, what is constantly in your mind, your actions, your attitude, the way you carry yourself is going to reflect your thought life. Okay. I was speaking with somebody, um, yesterday and I, and I, this is just a, a kind of a gross way to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, how can I say this? What, what we say is, is the, is the throw up of what we think. I know that that sounds gross, but my point is, when you think about something and you think about something and you think about something and you think about something, when it finally comes out of your mouth, bleh, does that make sense? When it finally comes out of your mouth, all that's coming out of your mouth is what you've been thinking about all this time. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are you thinking? Okay. What are you thinking about? What, what goes around and around and around in your mind? Okay. It, is it, are they thoughts of victory? Are they thoughts of health? 
I was even doing some reading. And do you realize that your thought life affects your health? Your thought life affects whether you feel sick or whether you feel well. Your thought life can affect your hormones. Your thought life can affect your mood. Your thought life, the things that you think, it doesn't just affect your actions. It can affect literally your health, your well-being because of what you are thinking, because of what you are meditating on. Okay, so what we say is just a product of what we've been thinking, what we say. So this is the reason why it's not enough for you to just say, oh, by his stripes, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. It can't just be from your mouth from here on out. That doesn't carry power. What carries power is what, what gets ingrained here in your heart and what becomes revelation in your heart, what your heart believes, what your heart holds on to what you have conviction on, on uh, in your heart. When it finally comes out of your mouth, now it comes out of your mouth with faith. It comes out of your mouth with authority. It comes out of your mouth with power. Why? Because your heart believes it. So when you finally believe it and that thing comes alive and it becomes real to you, now when it comes out of your mouth, it comes out with authority, it comes out with faith, and it comes out with power. Okay? What are you thinking? Because it all starts there. What are you thinking? All right. Um, so, so you have to pull the thoughts. You have to replace the thoughts. You have to grab them and make them, um, you know, remove them, release them, and replace them with the thoughts of God. Okay. I love this scripture, Joshua 1.8. Okay. Joshua 1.8 says, uh, this book of the law, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate. Somebody say meditate. A lot of people talk about meditating. A lot of people talk about meditating, 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 and it's connected to a whole lot of different, you know, things nowadays, meditating. Uh, but what they don't realize is when we talk about meditation and yoga and we talk about meditation and all of these different things, what the enemy is looking for is an open door to your thought life. What the enemy is looking for when, when, when they say, oh, meditate and empty your mind and just think about nothing and, and you know, what's the danger of always, you know, of, of uh, smoking marijuana and getting high? Because now your thought life is unprotected. Hey, sweetie, how are you? What is that for? This is, this is Mrs. Hadar, excuse me. She was at the door, and um, we saw that you were on the class. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Thank you. so. Wow. I feel like it's my birthday already, and it's not even June. Amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, can you put these right there for me so I can finish up this lesson? Mm -hmm. You going to sit here with me while I finish oh, up the lesson? Right hmm? right okay, sweetie pie. I love you. Oh, yeah. Um. So when, they, when it talks about meditating, when it talks about meditating on the word of God, okay, to meditate day and night, the word of God is saying meditate on, so, so okay, back to Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Look at this, that you may observe, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Where did it start? Making your way prosperous and having good success, okay? And remember, when we say prosperous, we're not just talking about money, okay? Prosperity is not money. Prosperity is your attitude. Prosperity is your soul. Prosperity begins in your spirit. It begins in your heart. It begins in your thought life. It begins in your connection with your heavenly father. That's true prosperity. You can be prosperous and not have a lot of money because prosperity is, is in your heart. It's in your soul. It's in your spirit. And eventually, the money comes because the money will show up and it will chase the magnet of the spirit of prosperity that you hold and that you carry on the inside of you. So the prosperity and the, and the having good success that the word of God speaks to us about is specifically, um, it begins in the meditation of God's word. Okay. It begins in the meditation of God's word. So when we talk about point number three that I said, enemy provoked thoughts come to sow seeds that will eventually grow and crack the foundation of who you are. You must pull these thoughts intentionally and replace them. What do you replace them with? The word of God. Oh, Pastor Joanne. No, seriously. Seriously. 
when the thoughts of God come to you and say, you are, you are just, you're, you're just an unfit mother. You have no idea what you're doing. Well, you know what, devil? That's a lie. Because the word of God says that if anyone lacks wisdom, they can ask for it and you will give it to them. So, Father God, if I do lack wisdom and I'm not doing a good job, I thank you right now, God, that the wisdom that I'm asking for, you're giving it to me. And I rejoice right now in the name of Jesus because I have time right now to whatever I've done wrong to make it right. See, you got to know how to flip it. You got to know how to have conversations with the enemy that comes to speak to you. And you have to control what goes on between these two ears, okay? What goes on inside this mind? Because what you are thinking with this mind, it will lead you into victory or it will take you down into defeat. We always talk about like the women's group, you know, a few years ago studied the battle of the mind because it is super important. Okay, even when we spoke about, um, you know, do you know your limits last week? If you don't know that you're a child of God, if you don't know that you're made in his image, if you don't know that you know that you know who you are, if you don't, if you don't uh, transform your mind and your thought and your thinking, you're going to continue to think like someone of the world. You're going to continue to think like a sinner. You're going to continue to think like somebody who doesn't know God. You're going to continue to think like somebody who doesn't have a relationship with God. You're going to continue to, to, to move and operate like you are from this earth as opposed to moving and operating like a child of God who is here as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, establishing the kingdom of God in everything we do, everything we say, everything that we, you know, that we, that we live. Okay, because it all requires a renewing of our mind. But the but what you're thinking, what you're consistently thinking, what consistently goes through your mind is going to govern how you live and how you act. But you have to replace those negative thoughts with the word of God. And then when you understand, because this is the thing, the devil doesn't come with anything new. Okay, so areas that he has messed with your thoughts, be it, um, you're incapable, be it you're not smart enough, be it you're not going to make it, um, God doesn't love you, um, God is not going to be there for you, anything, whatever the thought is, whatever the thought is, he always comes with the same thing, okay? He never, he never uh, comes with anything new. So these may be thoughts that you have dealt with since you were a child. These may be thoughts that you have dealt with um, since you were young. It may be things, oh, and the devil just loves to put that those exact words that you were thinking in the mouth of someone. And then you feel like it's real. Then you feel like this must be true about me because you heard somebody else say it to you. The devil is a liar. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You have to think the thoughts of God. You have to think about what God has spoken about you. You have to meditate on what God has said about you. I have to meditate on the fact that God has spoken to me and said, you are a voice to the nation. I have to meditate on the thought that God has given me everything that I need to be a good mother to, to my daughters. I have to meditate on the thoughts that God has given me everything that I need to be a good wife to my husband. Are there days where I feel like um, I'm not doing a good enough job? Absolutely. There isn't a wife or a mother that will say they feel like they always get it right. Because there's no one. We are our worst critic, okay? And I'm not saying don't be open to change. Yes, we should be open to change. Yes, we should be open to growth. But sometimes we are our worst critic and the enemy will take advantage of, of that of that attitude to just tear us down in our mind. And if we begin to, to meditate on those thoughts, he begins to bring us down. And that's when we start to just lose traction. We begin to lose power. We begin to lose the ability to be effective because now he has gained entrance into our thought life. He has gained entrance into the way that we think. There are certain things that you think about that you'll never say to somebody but those thoughts are running your life. Even if somebody said to you, you think this about yourself, you, you may be quick to deny it. Oh, absolutely not. I don't think that. I don't think that about myself and you might even get defensive. But when you are alone, just you and your thoughts, those thoughts are there. 
And you have to deal with those thoughts and you have to pull out those weeds and you have to replace those thoughts with what God has said and you have to be intentional about it. It is an ongoing project to renew your mind. And it's, it's like having, literally, it's like, ha like having a, um, a bed of, of flowers or having a garden. You cannot expect to, um, you know, to pull weeds one time. No, you're going to have to continually, because without planting those weeds, those weeds show up. They show up every week and a half. They show up every two weeks. I got some gardeners out there. And if you don't deal with those weeds, what happens with the weeds? They take over. The weeds take over everything that is good. Every pretty flower that you planted suddenly is being choked by weeds that you did not plant because the gardener was not effective or diligent in consistently pulling those weeds. I am here to tell you that it is time for us to be consistent and diligent in pulling the weeds of negative thoughts that is that that are um, that are planted by the enemy because he's trying to find a way in. Okay. Even if he, he doesn't, even if he can't get you into adultery, but he'll deal with that thought life. He may not be able to get you to cuss somebody out, but he will, he will get you and he will catch you up with the negative thoughts and he will paralyze you by using your own thoughts against you by using thoughts that he plants in your mind against you. Because the problem is, is that you continue to meditate on those negative thoughts and it paralyzes you. It takes you out. What are you thinking? What are you allowing yourself to think? What are you meditating on? What are you thinking every day? You have to be diligent and renew your mind with the word of God. Philippians 4, okay? Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That doesn't just happen. Okay. That doesn't just happen. It's, it's not, you're not just going to just stumble on to, um, you know, pure thoughts. You don't just kind of just stumble into pure thoughts. Okay. You have to be intentional. I have to be intentional. Every one of us, we have to be intentional to look at the silver lining. We have to be intentional to think about the goodness of God. We have to be intentional to, to, to think about and to contemplate on how God good, how good God is. You may not have everything that you want right now. You may not have everything that you desire right now, but can you be a uh, full of life in your thoughts? Can you be uh, full of joy? Can you make a conscious, conscious decision? to take out the negative thoughts and replace it with thoughts of praise, replace it with thoughts of worship, replace it with thoughts, thoughts of thanksgiving, replace it with thoughts of goodness and mercy and testimony, replace everything that the enemy would try to plant in, in your mind and replace it with the goodness of God, thinking about things that are pure, thinking about things that are good, thinking about the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, looking for something to praise God for. What are you thinking? Because what you're thinking is going to affect your life. What you're thinking is going to affect your health. What you're thinking is going to affect your relationships. What you're thinking is going to affect your finances. What you're thinking, if, you, if we can get our mind right, everything else will follow. Everything else will follow. And guess what? I'm not just talking about, oh, just positive thinking, positive thinking. Because there are certain things that the enemy is so intent on destroying you with that it is going to only be through the power of the Holy Spirit and the intervention of the Holy Spirit that you're going to be able to break that thought process and those thought patterns. And that means what? Continued relationship. Continued relationship and bringing these things to the Lord. Okay? So number one, I'm going to go back over it. You must renew your mind. Number one. Number two, Renewing of the mind is an intentional project that is ongoing. Number three, enemy provoked thoughts come to sow seeds that will eventually grow and crack the foundation of who you are. You must pull these thoughts intentionally and replace them. And what did we say we would replace them with? The word of God. What God, what does God say about you? Go back to, the, and I've said this a million times, go back to those prophetic words, write down prophetic words, keep it in your phone, go back to them, pray them, declare them, think about them, meditate on them, meditate on what, think about what you're going to do 
How, how, how am I going? How am I going to live when my marriage is the way I want it to be? Start planning for it. Meditate on it. Think about it. It may be bad today, but think of, imagine what it's going to look like when God has done what he said he's going to do. Think about what you're going to do. Think about where you're going to go. Think about how excited you're going to be not to have to fight that battle anymore. Think about what you're going to see yourself healed. See yourself full of the Holy Ghost. See yourself walking in purpose. See yourself being bold. Maybe you're a really, really shy person. But see yourself full of the Holy Spirit and being bold and meditate on that. And always connect what you think to what God is doing and what God is saying. Okay? So that's the difference between just positive thinking and new age and biblical Joshua 1 verse 8. Okay? Because we're not pushing God out of this process of the mind. Okay. We're welcoming God and we're welcoming the Holy spirit into the process of the renewing of our mind and what is happening with our mind. Okay. All right. So number four, the battle must be consistently won. And I put that down in caps consistently won. the battle must be consistently won in your thoughts to overcome in life. Okay, so this battle in our mind, like the weeds in the garden, they have to be dealt with on a daily basis. On the days that you don't pull the weeds, your day's gonna be tough, okay? But on the days that you are uh, mindful of pulling those weeds and mindful of what you're thinking, because what you're thinking is gonna affect what you say. What you say is gonna affect how you live and what you do and how you carry yourself and how you feel about yourself and how you act and how you, how the air and the, you know, how you come across to people, okay? Because what you're thinking and what you're meditating on and how you're connecting with God in your mind, it just, it, it, it translates. It speaks for you without you saying a word. So we must consistently win the battle in our thoughts to overcome in life, okay? Now, Matthew 12, verse 43 through 45, I'm not gonna read it, but it references when, um, when an evil spirit is rebuked or cast out. The word of God in Matthew 12, verse 43 through 45 says, it always returns to see if that space in your mind, in your heart is occupied or deserted. And if that place is empty, then they come back to take over stronger than before. That's in Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45. Okay, so the same thing with thoughts because thoughts are demonic spirits that come to have conversation with you, okay? Evil thoughts, negative thoughts are demonic spirits that come to have conversation with you. If you rebuke them, damn, listen to me, if you rebuke them in the name of Jesus, they have to go. But if you don't replace, if you don't fill that space with the word of God, if you don't fill that space with the spirit of God, yes, they go away, but they always come back. They always come back to see, let me see if that space is open. Let me see if, you know, Joanne is meditating on the word of God or not. Let me see if Joanne has, has filled that space that I left empty with anything, because if that space is empty, I'm coming in and I'm bringing more demonic spirits with me. So understand that's why you have to be diligent because you don't want those demonic spirits coming back to live in you, bringing more spirits and more negative thoughts with it in order to occupy your life and occupy your thoughts and occupy, because once they occupy your thoughts, they occupy everything. So when you cast them out and you cast those spirits out, you replace and you fill that place with the spirit of God, okay? Proverbs 23, 7, you already know it. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, as he thinks in his heart, as he thinks in his heart, that means as he thinks, and it's really what he believes, that is who he will become, okay? So if you continue to meditate on the fact that you're a child of God, to meditate on the fact that you were made in the image of God, to meditate on the fact that, that God loves you and that God has a plan for you and that God is gracious towards you and God is extending his mercy towards you and, and that the Holy Spirit is accessible to you and he's here and he is present to help you and he is present to, to give you victory over sin and he is present and you meditate on everything that God has spoken to you and your life will line up. Your life will line up with that meditation. Your life will line up with the spirit of God and the thoughts of God and the mind of God. What are you thinking? That's why the word of God in Proverbs 4, 23, and this is my last scripture. That's why the word of God in Proverbs 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart 
for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, guard your heart. But the previous uh, scripture that we just said shows that there is a connection between the mind and the heart. So to guard your heart also means to guard your thoughts, to guard your mind. So above all else, Proverbs 4, 23, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Okay? So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What is it that when nobody is around that you allow, the thoughts that you allow to live in your mind, the thoughts that you what are you thinking about yourself? What are you thinking about your spouse? What are you thinking about your children? What are you thinking about your life? What are you thinking about your future? What are you thinking about your past? Make sure that the thoughts that you allow to be prevalent in your life are the thoughts of God, the word of God, and the things that he has spoken over you. And meditate on those things, those things that are pure, those things that are holy, those things that draw you closer to him, those things that fill you with hope and expectation and understanding of his perfect will, those things that fill you with peace and everything that does not fill you with peace and everything that is not of God, you treat it like a weed in your garden and you pull it out, you pull it out, you put weed killer on it, you, you, you yank it, you pull it out. And you don't allow it to live with you. You don't allow it to remain in your mind. Knowing that that negative thought, even though it may start small, it has the ability to grow and damage your life. And you know what? I don't want that. And I know that you don't want that either, okay? So what are you thinking? I declare in the name of Jesus that you're going to change your thought life. You're going to renew your mind according to the word of God. And you're going to be diligent and you're going to be persistent. And you're going to be intentional about renewing your mind in the name of Jesus, we pray, okay? I love you. I bless you. I pray that this word has touched your heart. It's what God has been ministering to my heart. And you guys already know, I can only minister from where I am and the things that God is showing me and teaching me. And so I pray that you're able to go into this week with a new mindset, okay? And a new attitude, okay? Father, bless your people. Bless them, Father God, and teach them. Reveal to them right now the things that they have allowed themselves to meditate about, the things that are hindering them, the thoughts and the attitudes that are hindering them. And I ask God that you by the Holy Spirit would give them wisdom on how to navigate, on how to move, on how to kill those thoughts and really get into a life of victory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so very, very much. For those of you that are tithers and givers, Thank you. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being faithful to the ministry of the kingdom of God at Rainfire Church. Um, there are so many, so many good things happening during this time, and we cannot wait to see you soon and share with you everything that God has been doing that you have also been a part of through your prayers and through your sowing and through your giving. You are going to be just amazed at all that God has done, okay? And so uh, I pray that you continue to stay connected. I pray that you will share this with many people because people need to hear the word of God, okay? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I am missing. Make sure you join us on Wednesday, 7 p.m. for our Rainfire Midweek uh, right here. YouTube is the best place to catch it uh, so that we can be all together, okay? Um, oh, and I, you know, it's... God is doing great things, okay? God is doing great things, okay? Have a great week. I love you. I bless you. And um, just know that you are special and God is gonna continue to be faithful to his word as he's always been, okay? Have a great week. God,